Hi guys and welcome to the next instalment in this van build series. I hope you're all doing well. First of all, apologies for not making a video last week. I was just completely exhausted from working so much. I had to give myself a break from making the YouTube videos. Um, but I'm back now and in this week's video, I'm gonna be working on the kitchen. I wanna make the kitchen drawers and cupboards and put that all together. And also I just wanna tie up any loose ends around the van, getting it ready to install the wall cladding. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up or if you don't, thumbs down will be fine. Just let me know why in the comments, that'd be great. Um, and if you'd consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, it's completely free to subscribe. And if you click the little alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. So without further ado, let's crack on with a build. Cut a strip off of this four way stretch carpet, just wide enough to wrap around this pillar. Like that. And then we can run it up the pillar that's going to go there. When I come to stick this down, I want to spray my adhesive on both the metal and the carpet. I've covered the B pillars in this four way stretch carpet and it blends in nicely now with the headlining. And it's the same on this side, although you might not be able to see so well because of the sun. It's a bit of a nightmare recording it. Oh, and there's a cat in the garage. Hello, cat. Get out. I filled this up with foam and I'm also going to carpet over this. The back corners of the van, again, a bit of four way stretch carpet just to tidy that up a little bit. I'm just preparing the van ready to put the wall cladding in. So I need to make sure everything's in place. Let's measure this. So I've got this board I wanna cut down and at the moment it's not square. Um, none of the edges or corners are square so we've got nothing to work from. So I need to put a straight edge on this. Get my flush cut router trimmer and set it so the bearing will run on the plastic and now let's trim that off so now we've got this straight edge to work from we can use our square to make a perfect right angle and now I can zip this edge off and now I need to cut a notch out of each corner Or our lines to avoid breaking out the wood. I've just given it a quick sand up and now I'm just gonna give it a quick rub over with a damp cloth just to pick up any of the, the dust. This is a trade floor varnish and Fine because it's water based, it's easy to clean off the brushes. It's just a general all rounder, it's pretty good stuff. So that's the basin cut down, varnished. I just need to cut the hole for the waste to come through, but I'll do that from the bottom of the van once it's screwed in place. Now I want to start on the front of the unit and I'm going to cut down some strips of pine to go down each side either side of the sink and then one through the middle and one across the bottom and then we can make the door to fit inside that now i'm going to be using pocket hole joinery for joining this framework together I know lots of people frown upon it, 
but I think it's really good. It's quick and easy and you get a really strong joint out of it. So I'm using 19 mil pine, so I need to set this jig up for 19 mil. There we go. I've just got myself a nice flat board to assemble this on. This is the first sage green colour we went for, although we later on decided that it was a bit too minty, so we went for something different. So for making this shaker style cupboard door, I'm going to use the same method I used for making this frame. Just use some pocket hole screws to screw this frame together. Then I'm going to rebate a groove in the back of it and insert some ply. Um, so yeah, pretty straightforward really. I've made this slightly smaller just to leave a gap around the edge so the wood can expand and shrink as it needs to. Now I'm just going to get some sandpaper and bevel the edges. Doesn't take much. So now I'm just going to chisel out the corners using a nice sharp chisel. We shouldn't need to get to these screws anymore so I fill in the pocket holes using some wooden dowels specifically made for filling in pocket holes. Uh, they've just got a taper on the end of them so it makes sanding them off easier. And this is the other sage green colour we went for. We really like the colour, although it's a chalky finished furniture paint. It's really thick to apply and it dries incredibly quickly. I'm going to be going for the minimalistic look, just having ply panels in my cupboard doors. But you could always use tongue and groove cladding, that looks quite nice too. So that's that one there. So now I've got to make two more drawer fronts and one door. Right, that's all the frames made up for the kitchen. I just need to finish these off, sand off the filler, give them a paint up and make them look pretty.
I'm using these uh, old hinges from flat pack furniture. I've got this force and a bit 35 mil for cutting the holes for this particular hinge. So that's going to go in there. So this is one of the kitchen drawers. We just put a rebate in the bottom of this to slide some ply into it. Uh, pocket hole joints on the ends. And I'm gonna do the same with these four pieces now for the other drawer. And then I need to cut two pieces of ply to go in the bottom of these drawers. And then the front will be stuck onto that. I like to make them dry first, just so I know that it all fits together, and then glue it up afterwards. So that's the kitchen so far. I've put my drawers in with soft closed drawer runners. Uh, this one's a bit deeper for taking tins. Cupboard door down here. Again, soft close hinges. That's the kitchen coming along nicely now. Let's have a closer look. So this cupboard door here, I've just put a couple of magnetic catches on there to keep the door closed. This is a cutlery drawer here. And we've got another drawer here. And then that cupboard down there. I've changed the fridge door around so it opens from this side now. So we really like the green colour, but unfortunately this chalk finish isn't very durable. Um, even just putting these drawer fronts on to the drawers, I've marked it in loads of places as you can see here, and it scratches really easily. So I know you can coat this chalk paint in wax, um, but if ever I want to change the colour in the future, it's going to be a nightmare to paint over the wax. So I'm probably not going to do that. I'm going to look for a satin wood in this colour and paint it in that instead and i'm still in two minds whether i should paint this green to match in with the doors or keep it wood so let me know what you think in the comments whether i should paint that green or not i'd love to hear from you so all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching this video i hope you found value in this content and you enjoyed watching the video if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe and hopefully i'll see you next time cheers guys bye for now